the 25th Annual Critics' Choice Awards with Ron Jacobson. So good to see you. Hey, Evan. Good to be back. <laughs> and um, Ron, of course, is an actual voting member at the Critics' Choice Awards. So we have all the inside scoop and we're actually here with all the media setting up, waiting for all the stars to walk down the, red, uh, the blue carpet. So tune in and we'll have some big celeb news for you coming up. Check it out. So this is probably the most important person on the red carpet and in this venue. This is Joey Billin, who is the president of the Critics' Choice Association, right? I got promoted. I'm now the CEO. The CEO. He's the CEO. And also one of the producers, right? The executive producer of this event. So we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of this. Would you have believed that it would have survived that long? You know, I was just talking to some of my Netflix friends just before I came over, uh, I drove by the Sofitel Hotel on the way over here this morning, uh, where we did the first two shows, you know, back before you were born, and, uh, and yeah, 25 years is a long time, and uh, we're just getting bigger and bigger and better. Uh, 1917 has a lot of momentum right now, and it came into the race very late, and it, I think it's the last contender to open theatrically, or even be screened for the press, and that's, uh, that's given them a lot of uh, immediacy in the current campaign. But I'm not a campaign strategist, I'm just a moviegoer who likes to tout films I enjoy. A little bit easier, and uh, I'm, oh, standing on a dress. I'm just happy uh, to be invited back to the party. It's an honor, and it, I'm unbelievably grateful to be here, and for the work to be able to speak, and for people to help us take it to the world. It's very, very important, so very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting to be a part of the conversation, for sure, to be a part of art that's really changing people's hearts and their minds. Yeah, it's exciting. I just don't wear the fear on my face. <laughs> Because I was looking at like, okay. Oh, trust me. It is a tight walk, walk. But, you know, hey, it's all part of it, right? It's all part of it. I don't think about that. All I think about is that I started my career in 1970. In 2020, I'm standing here tonight at the Critics' Choice Awards talking to you. I'm so new to all this side of the industry, doing the red carpets and things like that, and being at this award show. Um, but it's honestly an amazing ride so far. I'll, I'll be honest, back in the 90s when the ER cast was having to get dressed up a lot of weekends in a row, there was a sort of laissez-faire attitude about it that, you know, when that ends, you sort of don't notice that it's gone for a little while and then a couple years later you go, I used to go to those shows a lot. And then to get an invitation just suddenly feels wonderful again. I love it because we're like, my world is very solitary. Like I write songs, I'm by myself in a room, and I get to come out and I talk to you guys, and I see people I haven't seen, and, and my songs get not, you know, the fact that there's so many songs that come out every year, right, like hundreds, and you guys picked seven, and one was I'm Standing With You, which is my song, and so I'm not taking that for granted, I love it. It did show on screens, and it continued on screens even after it started on, on streaming. Uh, uh, even from the get-go, since we knew Netflix was doing this, we kind of had that in mind. We, we framed the movie considering cinema and television. So I think it's a hybrid where it's, it's great to see it in the theater, but it's also pretty damn good on, on television. So it's a big challenge, a new challenge, so to say, for you as a cinematographer. Yes, yes, uh, it, it is a new challenge, but in the end we approach it similar it's a, you know it's storytelling lighting camera work it's all about underlying the emotions of the character so i approach it in the same way actually uh, i don't know if a lot of people know that you actually are lebanese descent right and you're playing a jewish dad tell us about how, what you brought from your lebanese background into being a jewish dad because it's probably the same it's exactly the same <laughs> it's very close and um yeah, I mean, I draw a lot from uh, my own father, in, you know, for this character. 
and I was very young, uh, you know, during these years that the show takes place. But I still have vivid memories of, um, you know, the kind of the, the, the dynamic between men and women, um, between uh, parents and children. So um, I carry a lot of that with me. I think that television has always been scared to put a Jewish family on television. Um, and the fact that it's been so embraced worldwide, especially at a time when, you know, we feel the rise of anti-Semitism, to feel that people love this show and love these characters feels like it's a little bit of a healing moment. You know, it's kind of scary out there right now. The trick is to try to stay true to the characters and yet let them grow. So that was the biggest challenge, I think. Choice were uh, again a precursor of what's going to happen. 